Go back to your scriptures. Go back to your Vedas and realize that God is one. Division in Islam is prohibited. We understand the concept of God in Hinduism. Quran is the most positive book. Every day, more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted in India after they identified that they're females. According to the statutes of 1996, U.S. Department of Justice, 2,730 women are being raped every day. Every 32 seconds, one woman is being raped. I've been raped in U.S. until the time I'm here. Islam has the solutions to the problems of the West. السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ میں ایک دس اپورچنیٹی تو ویلکم آل دی آرڈینس ان ایک واسٹ ملٹیٹیوٹ پریزنٹ آن دس یوچ سمایا گراؤنڈز دی لارجس گراؤنڈ ان ممبائی ایز ویل ایز دی اوور ہنڈرڈ ملین پیپل واشنگ آز آن پیس ٹی وی ویلکم تو دس لارس دی آف دی تین دی انٹرنیشنل اسلامی کانفرنس ان ایکزیبیشن انٹائٹل Peace, the solution for humanity. We begin today's program with the Qirat by Sheikh Abdul Fattah at taruti from Egypt.
the translation of the Kirat by Brother Musa Sir Antonio from Australia. And we did not give the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa knowledge of poetry, nor would it be befitting for him. It is not but a reminder and a clear Qur'an to warn whomsoever is alive and to justify the words against the disbelievers. Do they not see that we have created them from what our hands have made? Grazing livestock and then they are their owners? And we have tamed them for them, so some of them they may ride, and of some of them they may eat. And for them therein are other benefits and drinks, so will they not then be grateful? But they have taken besides Allah other gods, that perhaps they would be helped. They are not able to help them, and they themselves are but soldiers in attendance. So let not their speech grieve you. Indeed, we know that which they conceal and that which they declare. Does man not consider that we created him from a mere sperm drop? Then at once he is to be to us a clear adversary? And he presents for us an example and yet forgets his own creation. He says, who will give life to the bones whilst they are disintegrated. Say, he will give them life who produced them the first time, and he is of all creation knowing. It is he who made for you from the green tree fire, and it is from that which you are able to ignite. Is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the light of them? Yes, indeed it is so and he is the knowing creator. His command is only when he intends a thing that he says to it, be, and it is. So exalted is he in whose hand is the realm of all things, and to him you will be returned. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, say, he is Allah, one, Allah, the self-sufficient. He begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is nothing that is like unto him. Jazakallah, Sheikh Abdul Fattah Taruti for your Qirat and Brother Musa for the translation. I welcome the huge crowd gathered here at Sumaya ground on this last day, last session of the 10-day International Islamic Conference and Exhibition. Inshallah, we'll be starting the session of the talk followed by the question and answer session and the concluding part of the session would be brief remarks by each of the speakers you have been hearing over the last 10 days, the distinguished international speakers addressing this conference. And inshallah, we will conclude the session lastly by the dua by Sheikh Salah al Budair, Imam Masjid al Nabawi, Medina. Though many know Dr. Zakir Naik, it's my honorous duty to introduce him, especially those watching him first time on Peace TV with its more than 100 million viewers. Dr. Zakir Naik is the president of and the main driving force behind the Islamic Research Foundation as well as the organization of this conference. The Islamic International School Mumbai has been conceived, planned and developed by Dr. Zakir Naik. The United Islamic Aid is a systematic venture through Zakah for the upliftment of the many underprivileged Muslim brothers and sisters 
starting with the educational scholarships and now the primary health care centers for the needy. Dr. Zakir is a medical doctor by professional training and is renowned as a dynamic international orator on Islam as well as a shock conductor of comparative religious study. Dr. Zakir Naik clarifies Islamic viewpoints and clears misconceptions about Islam using the Quran, authentic Hadith, and other religious scriptures in conjunction with reason, logic, and scientific facts. Dr. Zakir is famous for his specific analysis and satisfying answers to challenging questions posed by audiences and critics of Islam after his public talks. His public dialogues with prominent personalities of other faiths, like Dr. William Campbell of USA and the famous guru Sri Sri Ravi Shankar of India, as well as others, have infallibly overturned the widespread wrong notions about Islam. These dialogues have also reaffirmed the revelation of the Quran for entire humanity being in continuation of the earlier revelations of God Almighty for humankind. The Indian Express included Dr. Zakir Naik in its list of the 100 most powerful Indians in 2009 amongst the billion plus population of India. In its special list of the top 10 spiritual gurus of India, Dr. Zakir Naik was ranked number three after Baba Ramdev and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar being the only Muslim in the list. Dr. Zakir appears regularly on many international TV channels throughout the world. He is the spirit and brain behind Peace TV, which is telecast worldwide with separate English and Urdu programming and channels via four strategically located satellites. Peace TV is the most watched 24-hour Islamic satellite channel in the world. For this concluding session of the conference, to talk on a topic of great and ultimate significance for most of the people in this world, what is the purpose of our life? Brothers and sisters, with thunderous applause, let's welcome on stage the articulate analyst, Dr. Zakir Naik. That is peace acquired and submitted over to Almighty God is the only solution for the whole of the world. And worship the Creator, not the creation. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain amma abad. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liyabdun. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allazi khalaq al-mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Rabbi shalli sadri wa yassalli amri wa halul ugdata min lisani yafqaw qawli. The honorable scholars speakers, the respected guests, my respected elders, my dear brothers and sisters, and the millions of viewers who are watching this program live on Peace TV. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. The topic of this last lecture, of the last session 
of the last day of the 10-day International Islamic Conference, peace the solution for humanity is, what is the purpose of our life? How many of us have really ever thought in their life, what is the purpose of our life? How many of us have ever thought, what is the purpose of our existence? What are we doing here? Why are we here? Let us start analyzing right from here itself. I request all the people in the audience, all of you, if you have ever thought in your life, what is the purpose of your life, please raise your hand. I would like to know amongst the audience, how many of you have ever thought in your life, what is the purpose of your life? Fine, maybe I can see 10, 50, maybe 100 hands. An audience of more than 100,000. That is less than 0.1%. Some may have felt shy to raise their hand. So surely I can say less than 1% of the human beings have ever thought in their life what is the purpose of our life. Is it required that should we know what is the purpose of our life? To help you, let me give you an example. Once a man, when he was traveling, and when he came at a crossroad, he asked the passerby, where does this road lead to? The passerby asked him, where do you want to go? The man replied, anywhere. The passerby answered, then take any road, it will make no difference. Imagine that traveler, he had no goal. Whatever actions he did, whatever deeds he did, it made no difference because he wanted to go anywhere. And many of us are leading our life in the same way. Let me give you one more example. Imagine there is a builder who starts constructing his building and he lays the foundation and he digs a big hole for the foundation. And when you ask him, how many stories is your building going to be? He says, I don't know. How many square feet is the built up area? He says, I haven't thought of it. The builder has got no goal at all. Once there was a man who told his neighbor, your dog always chases vehicles and cars. I wonder, will your dog ever catch up with any car? The neighbor replied, I don't wonder whether he'll catch up or not. I wonder if my dog catches up with the car, what will he do? The man who asked him, will the dog ever catch up with the car? He's short-sighted. The neighbor who was the owner of the dog, he was far-sighted. Even if he caught up with the car, what will he do? What is the purpose of his goal? And unfortunately, many of us, we are leading our lives same fashion, just like the dogs. You know, people do graduation and you ask them, why are you doing graduation? And they don't know the reason. Just because they want to be a graduate. What will you do after you finish your graduation? I haven't thought of it yet. Most of us are leading our lives like that traveler or like the dog who's chasing cars. Absolutely without a purpose. Many of us, we copy goals of others without scrutinizing it. When we ask a student, 
why are you doing commerce? So he will reply, because my friend is doing commerce. Many people, they emulate and they copy the actors, the models, without realizing what they're doing. Once a person comes from the village to Bombay to become a millionaire. And when the question was asked to him, why have you come to Bombay? So he gives the reply that I have seen Amita Bachchan in the Hindi movie. He's a pauper. He comes to Bombay and he becomes a multi-millionaire overnight. That is the reason we find many people coming from outside Bombay and they're settling in Bombay to become a multi-millionaire overnight. And that is the reason you find that the sums in Bombay are increasing. Many times we see actors and models, they are brand ambassadors and they endorse certain products. There was a person who purchased a new car, Hyundai i10. And when the question was asked, why have you chosen this particular car, Hyundai i10? So he says, my favorite actor, Shah Rukh Khan, he owns Hyundai i10. I doubt whether Shah Rukh Khan ever sat in Hyundai i10 except in the advertisement. He may be owning a Mercedes or a BMW or somewhat similar. I doubt whether he owns an i10. Shah Rukh Khan endorsed the watch Tag Heuer. He's a brand ambassador of the watch Tag Heuer. And we find many of his fans buying Tag Heuer. I wonder what has Tag Heuer got to do with the acting of Shah Rukh Khan? Has that watch, has that wrist watch ever helped him in acting? I doubt whether he wore Tag Heuer before he became a famous actor also. So these are the various ways the media promotes products. And unfortunately, we blindly follow goals of other people without realizing what we are doing. Imagine there's an industrialist who buys a textile factory. And when asked, why have you bought the textile factory? He tells us that I've come to know that there is good profit in textile business. Then you ask the next question. Do you have a feasibility report? He says, no. Have you had someone to take care of your business? Have you hired a CEO, chief executive officer? He says, no. What is the percentage of profit you will make? He says, I don't know. Where will you buy the raw materials for? He says, I haven't thought of it. Where will you sell your textile? He says, I don't know. Do you think that businessman will make profit in the textile industry? Imagine there's a person who has a goal. He wants to become the best scientist of the world. What does he do? He does a survey of all the scientists from the first human being, Adam P. be upon him till today. And after doing a survey, he comes to know the best scientist of human history was Isaac Newton. And his survey was correct. After that, what does he do? To become like Isaac Newton, he starts growing long hair, curly hair like Isaac Newton. He wears shoes like Isaac Newton. He wears clothes like Isaac Newton. Do you think he will become a successful scientist? Such people have a goal, but the planning is wrong. They have a planning. They did a survey of the scientist, but the planning is wrong. Coming to the basic question. 
what is the purpose of our life what is the purpose of our existence in this world who do you think would be the best person to reply to this question what is the purpose of our life do you think is dr zakir naik surely the answer is no do you think the scientist can answer this question the answer is no do you think the philosopher can answer this question the answer is no the best answer to this question what is the purpose of our life can be given by our creator god almighty allah subhanahu wa taala and i started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious quran from surah zariyat chapter number 51 verse number 56 where allah subhanahu wa taala says wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liyabdun i have not created the jinns and the men but to worship me i have created the jinn and the men only to worship me the arabic word used here is ibada coming from the root word abd which means servant which means slave ibada means servitude means worship it means obedient submission in short ibada means worship or obeying the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala of our creator almighty god whatever allah subhanahu wa taala almighty god commands us if we obey it is called as ibada it is called as worship for example allah subhanahu wa taala says that you have to follow the five pillars so if you believe in tauhid believe there's no god but allah then you're doing ibada then you're worshiping allah if you pray if you offer salah you're doing ibada you're worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala if you give zakat obligate to charity you're doing ibada you're worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala if you fast you're doing ibada you're worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala allah says in the quran that you have to provide neighborly needs so if you take care of your neighbor as quran says in surah maun chapter number 107 Verse number seven. Then you are doing ibada. You are worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you abstain from the things Almighty God Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has told you to abstain from, then you are doing ibada. If you abstain from having alcohol, you are doing ibada. If you abstain from having pork, you are doing ibada. You are worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you abstain from stealing, cheating. telling lies you are doing ibada you are worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala in short when you follow the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala if you submit your will to allah subhanahu wa taala you are doing ibada you are worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala and every act of a human being can be converted into worship if you follow two criteria number one is the act should be done only and only for the pleasure of our creator allah subhanahu wa taala point number 2 the act should be done according to the sunnah the way the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him has done if you have these two things in your act every act of yours can be converted into ibada can be converted into worship whenever you buy an equipment along with equipment you get an instruction manual if you allow me to call the human being a machine you'll have to agree that the human being is the most complicated machine on the face of the earth don't you think that this human being this machine requires the instruction manual the last and final instruction manual for the human beings it is a glorious quran 
the glorious Quran, the last and final commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, revealed to the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is the last and final instruction manual for the human beings. The do's and don'ts, how a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, the glorious Quran. Many people ask me the question, why does Almighty God want us to worship Him? Is He hungry of our worship? Why does He want us to praise Him? Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Is Almighty God hungry for praises? Allah replies in the glorious Quran, in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 15, O ye men, it is you who need Allah. And Allah is free of all wants, worthy of all praises. The Quran says in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse number 15, O ye men, it is you who need Allah. Allah is free of all wants and worthy of all praises. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to worship Him and to praise Him is not for His benefit. It is for our benefit. When we say Allah Akbar, it does not make Allah great. Allah is already the greatest, irrespective whether you say Allah Akbar or not. Allah will yet remain the greatest. It will make no difference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the reason Allah wants us to praise Him is because He knows the human psychology. We human beings, whenever we praise someone, whenever we know someone who's great and famous, we but natural tend to follow his advice. For example, if your mother has a heart attack and you have an option, there's a layman who comes and gives you advice. Will you follow his advice or a person who you know is the best heart specialist in the world and he's willing to give you free advice? Whose advice will you take? Will you take the advice for your mother from the best heart specialist in the world or from a layman but natural because you know the heart specialist is famous people keep on praising him you indirectly tend to follow his advice similarly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to praise him he is the greatest Allah is the greatest Allah is the most knowing Allah is the most wise so that the moment when we say he is the most wise when he gives us the advice we indirectly tend to follow it. If we don't agree, he's most wise, most knowledgeable, then the chances we will follow it advice is less. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to worship him and to praise him, not so that it will benefit him, but it will benefit us. Allah says in Surah Fatir, Chapter 35, verse number 15. O oh, Amen, it is you who need Allah. Allah is free of all wants, worthy of all praises. Allah.